Appreciate that. Um, okay, so we're going through the stages of scientific method. Hopefully when you came in, you were listening to the song. Again, try not to memorize the steps. If you can kind of hear that song in your head, you don't have to worry about memorizing, right? Like, it's just kind of there. It gets stuck with you. You take it with you wherever you go, and you're not having to put, like, brain power to remember these things. The more you can do, close it. Thank you. The more you can do without trying to memorize, the more you can do with just kind of, like, thinking things through logically, that's the stuff that's going to stay with you and be most beneficial. So we are on slide number 11 is where we left off. And so we were getting to the part where we are talking about the hypothesis has a very set format. It is called the if-then format. So every hypothesis is going to start with the word if, and it's going to have the word then kind of in the middle of it somewhere. Are you good, Brayden? Yeah? Okay. Yeah? No. I think what you filled in maybe was situation and the word prediction. Does that sound right? Yeah. Okay. I have a Wait, what? I don't know where we are. Oh. oh, we're all the way up there. I'm already down to number. We four. are on slide 11. Oh. Right? That's where we left off. Oh. So the words that you were filling in were situation and prediction. Yeah. Yes? It, I have a prediction. Yeah. And Eli, you should have your white copy. It's our, yep. Okay. So you're just listening and following along with this, okay? Perfect. All right. So here's the thing, and we're going to go through um, some practice and some more details with the hypothesis stuff today. So um, the whole point of writing a hypothesis is to help keep you on track, right? It's to help you have a very well-established, um, focused experiment, all right? And a lot of times you're trying to prove that your hypothesis is right, and you do the experiment, and dang, you were wrong. Oh no, right? You ended up being totally wrong. So if I make a prediction that Tide was the best at removing stains, and here it ended up being gain, I was wrong. But guess what? At least now I know. So I know more after doing the experiment than I did before the experiment. It doesn't matter if I'm right or wrong. I've gained knowledge, and that is what's important, okay? Uh-oh, where am I at? Damn, this mouse is crazy. There we go. So don't panic like I do when I can't find my pointer for my mouse. Um, your experiment was not a failure, right? Not a failure. You still know more now than you did before the experiment. You know that it is not tied laundry detergent that's going to be the best. It's gain. And so that means you learn something. Knowledge is what counts. Okay? Knowledge is what counts. Even though, let's face it, we really all like to be right. Right? It's, it feels good to be right. Be like, yes, I picked gain and gain was right. But in science, we have to let that ego go and realize. New information is good information, and go with that. All right, so one of the reasons that we write a hypothesis in the first place is it gives us something to follow. Who here has ever done a Google search? I better see every hand. Okay. How many of you have ever done a Google search, and like 10 minutes later you're like, what was I looking up? Like you get way sidetracked. Like you see one thing and you're like, ooh, that looks cool. And then you click it and then you're like, oh my. And you see something else, you click that. Next thing you know, you're like 10 clicks away from where you started and you're like, huh? Like you just, it happens all the time, right? I have to keep very focused. Certainly like if I'm in a hurry, because it's so easy, there's so much out there. And it's just like, oh, you can go in all these different directions. And experiment's kind of the same way. And when I've had people um, do different science experiments like that they pick and they write on their own, if they don't have a good hypothesis, they end up like a Google search. All these different things that they end up trying to test that don't have anything to do or not very much to do with their question. So 
um, it's easy to kind of veer off track. And I'll give you some examples of that as we go through this year. Um, just, you guys have done it firsthand with Google. Trust me, it can happen with experiments as well. Okay, so having a well-written hypothesis is gonna set your experiment up for success, right? It's gonna keep you on track, it's gonna keep you focused, it's gonna keep you actually testing what you mean to test so that it answers that original question, okay? So, for example, if we go back to the, the idea of which laundry detergent works best at removing, removing let's say, grass stains, Okay, so if that's my, my question, what will remove grass stains best from my jeans? Well, I could write a hypothesis. If I use Tide and Gain laundry detergent to remove grass stains, then Tide will work best. Okay, if I have a hypothesis like that, I probably should be able to set up an experiment based on that little situation. I use Tide, I use Gain, I have grass stain on my pants, and I try to use, thank you, I try to use both of those to get the grass stain out, using them separately, right? I could set up an experiment with that. I asked him to do that. I blocked you guys. Move me out of the way. I don't want to do Shoot that. Shoot Okay? So, if I don't have a hypothesis to follow, as I start to set this up, I might see a couple other types of laundry detergent and want to test those. And then maybe I'm like, ooh, I just spilled the tomato sauce like from my spaghetti on my shirt maybe i'll test that so you kind of start getting veered in all these different directions testing other detergents testing different stains testing a lot of different things that didn't go with your original question and didn't go with your original hypothesis not that they're not good things to test but that's something different you stay focused on what you mean to test right? that's why a hypothesis can be so important all right so let's go ahead um I'm going to go ahead and stop here, and we're going to look at the cheat sheet. Okay. Oh, the cheat.